is up everybody it's easy easy street gaming we are gonna go back to day one we're gonna go back to as if you just fell out of your mother's womb with your iPhone in your hand that just downloaded clash like all iPhones come with now and uh, go over some of the do's and don'ts want, want you to try to avoid some of the pitfalls that I went through when I when I first started playing and there's a lot of them out there so hopefully this will help Everyone that's just started playing, uh, get ahead of the game. Because there's a lot that you can do wrong. It, it may not seem like it. It may seem like you're, making, you're doing all the right things. And it just may be something that you just put yourself back with, you know, big time. So, let's first go over on uh, how to build a base. What you should be looking for. What, what you want to avoid. And, uh, and, and basically from there we'll go into uh, how do you make your war base that the similarities the differences and all that stuff so um, we're gonna start off by building a town hall 5 out of uh, I use too easy he's one of my mini accounts we use too easy as a town hall 9 but we're gonna build, we're gonna kind of bring it back down to a town hall 5 and, and when I did this my intention isn't for everyone to count the walls and to make sure I have all the right pieces in place I may have the wrong amount of walls I may have <laughs> it may not be all right there but that's not the point the point is that, that you're not supposed to build a base that looks like this the big square base with town hall in the center with all of the big structures like the storages all surrounding town hall that is not how you build your base that's how you that's a death trap for you you'll you'll they'll 100% you pretty much every time that they raid you so you want to avoid doing that at all costs I know that base building can be tedious uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of tedious parts of the game now if you're going to be able to play long term and play at a high level you have to learn how to enjoy some of the tedious things uh, for example I love building the bases I've probably built a thousand bases uh, so if you can figure or or just find a way to enjoy making different bases, then you'll you'll last a while playing the game. So, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna deconstruct this base. The first thing we're gonna do is take Town Hall out of the center, and we're going to put the Clan Castle in the center. The reason is is the Clan Castle is probably your strongest defensive piece, believe it or not. Uh, if you've just started playing, you may not even be in a clan yet, but if you are in a clan, then you already know that you can get Clan Castle troops donated to your Clan cl Castle. And um, if you're in a clan that has uh, clan perks, the troops that they donate to you go up a level or maybe even up two levels depending on the level of the clan. So there's a good chance you can get max troops donated into your clan castle. So, which this means that if you're a town hall 4 or 5 or you know if you're a town hall, whatever town hall level you are, if you're a lower town hall level and you have max troops in your clan castle, they are instantly the strongest part of your defense. So we're going to center that particular piece. Now later on, once you once you raise your town hall level up a little bit and you have more structures to put around the town hall, you'll actually start building your base to where it will be harder for invading armies to trigger those clan castle troops. If you click on the clan, the clan castle, it has a trigger radius. That circle that you see when you click on it, that's actually the radius of where when incoming troops come in, if they once they cross that circle, that's when your clan castle troops will come out. And you want to avoid allowing incoming players to trigger those clan castle troops without being fully engaged in the attack. You don't want them to send one troop in and your clan castle troops come out. They can do what's called a lure and lure them into the corner of the base. And then they can easily dismantle and kill the, the clan castle troops, which is a huge bonus for them and, and hurts you. So as we're building the base, you notice that the first thing we've done now, this is just an example. I'm not saying this is the best base, it's by far probably not, but this is a good example of a base that you should, the type of design that you want. Um, we have multiple sections to the base. We also are going to separate all of the storages. The storages are where you're going to hold all of your loot. Um, you, you know the collectors, they, go, they are constantly pumping loot into your base. And once you come on to play, you'll empty all of your collectors and all that loot will go into the storages and that's where it all stays until you use it. So all of your storages will have the majority of the big loot that you've been collecting. It's all in there. So you want to make sure that you don't pile it all up in one place in your base. You want to, if you have a, a base that has four sections, you know, if it's symmetrical with four sections and you have four storages, you want one storage in each section. You want to make the attacking player 
take 100% of the base to get 100% of your loot. That's the way this works. So by piling everything up in the middle or in one section, what you're doing is you're allowing the attacking player to overload any one part of the base, break into that one part, and then ta and take it. And you may think that the center of the base is the safest place, but it's really not because you know players can, can overload one wall with all their troops, break into that one wall, and then by using spells and some, uh, some funneling techniques, they can, they can push all those troops into the middle. So you don't. So the middle is not necessarily the safest place for all this, for all of your uh, storages. So, so spread them out over the whole base. Now, there is a fundamental difference between your village and your war base. The fundamental di difference for your village is that your defenses, and this is going to sound kind of ridiculous that I even have to say this, but your defenses protect your loot. They protect the storages. They, they're going to protect all of the. All of the resources that you've been so hard, work, you've been working at it so hard, and you've got all this, all these resources, and then it seems like every time you you go offline, someone attacks you. So you want to try to make sure your defenses are protecting your loot as best as possible. And we'll get into the difference between the uh, on the war base once that part of the video comes up. It's coming up here in a, in a second here. So now something else that you'll notice: we don't have a section of the wall open with a spring trap in it and that's a common mistake that the noobs will make they'll, they'll open up a couple walls and they'll put spring traps in there thinking that the troops will automatically go to that open section of wall hit the spring trap and the attacks over well you're right about one thing the troops will go into the opening of the wall but the problem is that the attack won't be over they will just be inside your base so don't leave any of the outer walls open uh, it's good to put spring traps in between defenses it's good to put your single bombs on the outside of the walls that way when they come in with uh, wall breakers you might get a little lucky and, and, and take out the wall breakers they'll have a wall breaker fail and you're in good shape so this is the war base this is one of a, a common new player mistake is they'll build a, they'll build their, their base in the corner thinking that the mountains are going to protect them it doesn't they just come in behind the walls so don't do that uh, this is another common mistake this is the, the square inside a square this is just like the big square. It's something you want to avoid. You don't ever just build two big squares. You, the more walls that the attacking player has to break through, the better. Uh, now, you are not trying to protect your loot in war. So you don't need to put Town Hall in the middle and put all the loot all around Town Hall and then put all the guns on the outside of the loot to protect it all. Uh, they cannot take anything that belongs to you in war. The, the game itself rewards them the loot in that in the in uh, in clan wars uh now this this picture that just flew by i'm behind is the defense is all stacked up next to each other with no spaces in between them that's a bad idea you want to make sure there's spaces next to all of your defenses that keeps the attacking player guessing they, they don't know if there's a spring trap or a hidden tesla later on or a giant bomb next to some of the defenses don't pile up everything and leave no spaces there's no guesswork and it's a lot easier to plan for an attack like that now I start off making bases, especially war bases, the same way. I start off with a clan castle in the middle. I kind of described earlier why, because uh, the, the clan castle has that trigger zone, and I'm going to try to build the base out far enough to where I can cover that whole trigger zone and make the attackers bust through the walls with a bunch of troops, and then trigger my clan castle's troops, so my clan castle troops can engage their troops in the base instead of outside the base in a corner somewhere. Um, now you notice that I put down the clan castle then those four walls and those four walls just were little indicators of where that clan castle uh, trigger zone was and it kind of I know at, at a lower town hall level this is this is uh, kind of copying a town hall 5 so there's really not that many walls I can't really cover the whole trigger zone but that's a very big part of the game and you want to keep that in mind even even at the lower town hall levels you want to use the same kind of, of thought process and tactics so protect the clan castle, make it hard for the attackers to pull those clan castle troops. Uh, now, the fundamental difference, as we were talking about earlier, between the war base and the village. In your village, your defenses are protecting the loot. Now, in your war base, it's just the opposite. Because they can't take the money out of the, out of the, out of the storages, you want to put your, your storages in front of your primary weapons and force the attacking players to come through these high hit point storages in order to get to your defenses. So your village, your defenses protect the loot, and in war, your loot protects the defenses. So that, that's a huge difference. 
and that's why I'll, you, you, you're gonna notice that you'll do great farming you'll do great in the resource hunting you get in the war is so much harder and the reason why it's so much harder is because they're forcing you to, to go through all the storages that and and it's a lot harder to do that just that the setup this way is a lot harder the last thing that you, that you saw in that little uh, section of video was uh, we had a Builders held up in the corner. We were kind of hiding it with uh, some decorations, and that's another tactic that we use to force the troops to, in order to three-star, to run to all four corners. Because a lot of players they'll forget to, to put troops aside, and it may just take one archer to take out that builder's hut. But you'll be surprised how many times people forget to, to do that. So I'm going to go over a few other things that I think all new players should know. And while we do that, we had made, one of the first series that I made when I first started doing the YouTube videos was, was the introdu introduction to Clash of Clans. This is the first video in that series. Um, I'm redoing it because I just watched the original and I wasn't very happy with what, the way it came out. I don't know what happened to the original, but I, I swear <laughs> what I just watched was not the original. So, what I've done here is I, I've put... Uh, Every single, the cover, the cover picture to every video that we've made in this series is coming up. So you can take a look at all the different covers. And uh, and if you're interested in any of these topics, these are all all big points on how to play. Um, you may see something that you don't understand or that doesn't make any sense to you. And that really just means that you really need to investigate that because they, these are all re really big parts of the game. So t check that out. There's a few other things I want to go over. Um, one is the global chat. Uh, you'll know that if you're not in a clan, you can start investigating all the buttons and you'll see where you can join a clan and you'll also see the chat room. And the global chat is used for clans to go and try to find players to join your clan. It's, jo it's also there to entertain people. You can talk to anyone around the world on your global chats. There's different, um, there's different language settings which from what I understand are different servers in the game. So you can uh, basically talk to, if, if you know a different language, click on that setting. You can talk to people in that language. Uh, so <laughs> the downside to the, to the global chat is that it's a giant bitch fest and that there's a lot of really aggressive players in there that are just there to try to embarrass other people. That's where you're going to learn the term rushing, gemming, uh, any insult that they can possibly throw at you, you're going to learn in the global chat because these people are, are, are heartless and, and pretty rough in the global chat. So I just wanted to let you know before you, you, got, you went in there and, and you were blown away by someone uh, talking about having sex with your mother or your sister or your brother or your father, um, expect that because that's what they do in there. So it's kind of crazy, kind of sucks. But it's a necessary part of the game because if you don't know any other resources, that's the only place you can go to try to get people to join your clan or to find clans. Um, but there are other resources out there. You can go on the internet and find much more suitable choices. Uh, I would suggest going to, I would suggest going to the Clash of Clans Reddit. There is tons of Clash of Clans enthusiasts there. They have all kinds of comedic stuff there. They have all these uh, update um, leaks or whatever. If you're interested in all that. Um, they also have a page that's dedicated to the recruitment of players or if you're a player looking for a clan you can find that there too. So it's a lot better resource than just going into the global chat and getting that damn rat race there. So um, also on the screen we have all the different attacks that you can do. This, and this isn't all of them either. I've probably listed 10 or 15 but there's a lot more than this. I just wanted to show you how intricate the game was and how many different combinations of troops that there are. And these are all big time attacks that we've listed. So these are, uh, that's where, that's where you'll, you'll be soon if you just started playing. So also, I wanted to mention if I haven't already, because I forget already. Um, this was the first video of a bigger, bigger series. The first series that we ever made. I decided to remake the first video because it really sucked uh, originally. Um, hoping the rest of them are a little better than this one was. But uh, anyway. We invested a lot of time and energy getting the right information and there's a lot of good information, a lot of good tactics uh, and I think it would be really valuable if you're just starting out, watch those, watch that series of video. You may see a lot of things there that you, you don't expect or you don't understand right now just by watching but you'll get it and they're all important, they're really important aspects of the game. So 
watch those videos and it will help you a lot it'll be worth the time you spend watching it um, last thing was on the gems there's an in-game resource that you buy with real money they're gems the the way that supercell has the game starting you out they kind of teach you how to use the gems right away uh, basically you can speed up whatever you're building you can buy game resources with it and what I want you to do is take my advice and don't buy in-game resources with gems don't speed up all your stuff with gems only use gems to boost your barracks once you can you have to get them to a certain level that way you can attack a lot more it will speed up your barracks it will allow you to build troops faster you can attack one attack after another and that will give you more time to play and less time to wait around for your troops and that will give you the experience that you need instead of speeding up uh, the actual processes of the game which will actually cheat you at a valuable time that you need to play this this game is going to be difficult at times especially once you get up in the higher town level and you need all that time uh, you need all those attacks under your belt to understand the game mechanics and understand everything that's going to go on it, it gets complex so sub to the channel if you if you're just joining us i appreciate it if you just if you watched all the way to the end uh congratulations you might be the first person who's ever done that <laughs> uh, uh watch the other videos if you're if you're new to clash they're pretty informative i think you'll like them and i appreciate you guys for watching Till next time it's been easy take care everybody